Albert Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Let's understand how does one keep at it at all times. Hi, I'm Prashant Uttekar, a learning enthusiast, and you are listening to the Relearning Podcast. We have an expert to break down a few myths around learning by going back to basics and enable you to relearn. My guest for today is Emmanuel David, who has certainly kept at it for more than three decades now and still counting. Emmanuel is serving as director of Tata Management Training Center, famously known as TMTC. TMTC is the learning arm of Tata Group. He likes to call himself as a change agent, high impact senior leader and strategist. With over 37 years of experience, Emmanuel has worked with some renowned brands uh, heading HR and talent management. Emmanuel also has various certifications in coaching, sustainability leadership, corporate governance, and profitability management. Welcome to the Relearning Podcast, Emmanuel. Thank you so much, Prashant. I'm really amazed that you've chosen a topic like learning. I'm happy to be with you and uh, you know share some thoughts. I think it's something which is futuristic you have done. Thank you so much. And I'm glad uh, for you to make time for this uh, recording. Uh, I know when we are recording this, it's a Sunday and it's really gracious of you to uh, do this. So thank you. I'm honored. I'm obliged. Thank you so much. I, I, I admire your enthusiasm and motivation. Uh, being a business person, uh, you've chosen learning as a theme and to also help different people understand it. Super. Thank you, Manan. Well, uh, you know, this, this podcast is all about freelance. So let's get on with it. And when I was uh, reaching out to you, I realized something very different. And that, that's the first question for you, right? So during this pandemic, when most things were not operational, everyone was, everything was closed around us, you took on yourself to launch Tata Tomorrow University and Learning Latitudes, the webinar series. There are two aspects to this. And there's a proverbial Noah's Ark, you know, uh, yeah. if you heard about it. It was Absolutely. built when there was dry land. And I would say that Tata Tomorrow University is uh, something similar to that. The discussion and the thought started sometime in July of last year. And we were uh-huh. thinking about going online because looking at the trends, at that point in time, only about 5% of our offerings were online at, uh, at uh, TMTC. We said we must do something around it. So we were building this arc. And it just uh-huh. so happened that the pandemic uh, came in and it was the right time for it to set sail. And it was a lot of teamwork, colleagues and group human resources and TMTC worked collaboratively to make it happen. Uh, so, so I would say that what you saw was when the flood came, it was able to set <laughs> sail. But uh, the learning latitudes, uh, we said we must do something by about the 15th of March, because we said, okay, till about end of May, we're not going to have anything happening. Uh And what should we do? We should keep the connect with people. So that's how, that was what it was in my mind that connect with people. Then 22nd March, the lockdown happened. Then all of us were surprised and perplexed. We said three weeks of lockdown, what do we do? But we said, we need to do something. And uh, I'm blessed to have a good team. Then we, we said, okay, how do we get it moving? So lots of thoughts had to get in. First, you know, you, you have to get a whole speakers. They said, once you have something like this, you must have a battery of speakers. So uh, we wrote to several people and they were very gracious to respond. We, we, we did that. But there was a lot of learning which ha- had to happen, Prashad. <laughs> First and foremost, it, it seeing how to get it moving. So we need to have a platform then we need to know how to invite people, how to popularize it. So then we wanted to have a good, you know, big bang approach. So we we were fortunate to have Harish Bhatt do the Uh first session, which had over a thousand people uh, on the webinar. And with immense teamwork, we are going to hit the 100th webinar by about August 24th, 25th. And uh, all have been on time, barring once there was an outage but otherwise, we, we have started on time and all the people have been furiously working. The other thing is to take the recording, edit it, and, make, and keep it on the Tata Tomorrow University for those who missed to view it. And we yeah. have some good viewership also happening. 
So as, even as we speak, we've had, we, we have more than uh, 40, 45,000, you know, people visiting that and wow. about 15,000 unique uh, visitors. That is huge. That speaks volume. So you just said uh, you're hitting the 100th uh, webinar uh, by the end of the month. That's right. But, but oh, by that's, the, uh, August 25th, yes, end of the month. That's exactly when this podcast will also get released. So this is, again, universe has aligned uh, itself first to launch the uh, academy and the university that you have. And again, aligned for the, I, I'm, I'm so honored that, you know, it will be opportune time for to us to release this uh, podcast uh, on your 100th webinar. So congratulations there. So thank you. I, again, it's, it's again speaking huge volume, starting with Harish Bhatt. And I have seen the lineup of Learning Latitudes is just the top leaders in the country and otherwise. And I, it's, it's beyond Tata Group also. So it's amazing. In fact, I like the theme of this episode is around keeping at it. Like you said, Noah's Ark, right? Uh, no one yeah. knew when it was getting built, but universe <laughs> aligned itself and the floods came in and it was at the right time. So beautiful, beautifully articulated. Thank you so much. To my next question, uh, Emmanuel, you know, you interact with so many leaders, coach as well. My simple question to you, what is that one myth or a misunderstanding around learning that you would like to clarify or break? So uh, I, I think most people, when they think of learning, they think it, there should be a structure and there needs to be a classroom and they need to devote time. Yeah. And uh, I, I come somehow uh, find that is uh, good. You know, sometimes it's good to have the discipline and rigor. But I think each of us have one life and we need to make the best of it and be purposeful. Yeah. And the one thing which gives us that uh, energy, uh, you know, is the quality of our learning. You know, otherwise, if we don't learn, we are stagnant. And we can learn from anything, anywhere, actually. Yeah. And so the aspect which I think is we have to democratize learning. Uh, and I've been working around those aspects to democratize learning. And if I can give a lens to people that wherever you are, if you look at it a little differently, and if you seize the opportunity, you can learn. So may I give you an example? Please, sure. Over the last couple of years, I have created a body of work called Unconventional and Immersive Learning. Uh, wherever there is curiosity, then I think people be willing to learn. So I've taken people to places which are other than their normal context. And of course, you can call them field visits and excursions as such. But uh, the beautiful thing is in how you facilitate it thereafter. Because we all go and visit many places. For example, Prashant, we've gone, just to narrate a few places, we've gone to the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, interacted with senior officials there, and seen their facilities. We've been to an airport and we've seen, you know, right from the ATC to the baggage handling and security systems. We've been there, we've seen and understood that. And we actually also tried to sort out a problem they have about how to, you know, get back trolleys uh, for the passengers. We wrote a case and, and worked around that. We also went to the National Institute of Virology and we went to a fisherman's village or to a Kathakali, you know, art studio. Nice. And I must tell you, the, the learnings are boundless. And the way people listen and speak to each other thereafter, it demystifies many things. Let me tell you, sure. may I share one or two examples? Please, I, I, can't, I can't wait. Please go ahead. Right. So we went to meet the, the Director General of Police of a state, also see the Forensic Science Lab. Uh -huh. And uh, so there were about 40 executives. So we, they heard that the other teams have gone to some of the places I mentioned earlier. So we had a, you know, sharing at the, at the end of the session. I go through, I, I facilitate a learning session after the visit. Because that's right. where the richness of the learning comes out. So when I had to kind of summarize, I just recalled to them. I said, did you notice that each of you said when you were going to that place, I said, now the learning for us is this. We hold our biases. 
right? And that yep. bias may keep us from experimenting and learning new behaviors and new ideas. So while you've got information about the police and all they do, but also what we are also learning is that we should not hold biases. Can we take this away? Now, Prashant, this can't be taught in a class. Absolutely. It's only the experience and the process of it happens. And we want demystify it, right? And uh, there's another thing I will not hesitate uh, to say. At the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, I've written about it in my newsletter also. Perhaps I can share it in as many words. So towards the end of the conversation, someone asked, you know, how we are all obsessed with KRAs. So I said, sir, could you tell us how do you set individual KRAs? There was silence at the other end. There was the person who, the project manager, he said, I don't understand you, he said. I mean, he said, I don't understand you. The colleagues were very, you know, they said, no, 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 individual care is, you know, how do you set it? Tell us, tell us. They got agitated. <laughs> then they said, okay, let me explain this to you. The director of uh, human resources said, said it uh -huh. takes us, you know, seven to 10 years to design and build a rocket. And about, right. you know, roughly about 10 weeks or so, to assemble it all together. 20 seconds is success or failure at the launch. So my friend, we are all in mission mode. There is nothing individual about it. <laughs> that, that's nicely put. <laughs> now, <laughs> I am, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the kind of a thing through this unconventional learning, I'm trying to demystify and also democratize learning. And let me say, when it's a democratize, we were at a five-star hotel, my wife and I, waiting uh, uh, for, for a meal. They said it'll, it'll take about 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, we were hungry. And uh, therefore, when you're hungry, you can be irritable also. Yeah. We were seated in the, in the bar because the restaurant was under renovation. So okay. I, I told Nazreen, I said, come, let's ask the barman uh, what these glasses are, what do they mean? And in about 15 minutes, Prashant, they both got to know the different sizes and the shapes of the glasses and goblets in the uh, bar and why yeah. they use, what's the origin. And that's all it took. We don't need to have a classroom or an e-learning package. We just have to ask a question. You know, it's, it's, it's not a normal trait, uh, curiosity. It's not a normal trait uh, uh, usually found because people want to keep the questions to themselves, even if they are curious. But I'm glad that one question and your entire avenue or it for the entire unknown area can be demystified. Beautiful. I think just that one interaction, one question, it all takes to uh, you know open the open your eyes to another world altogether. Yes. If I might say, we need to ask it with. I would say humility and with a smile yes. and it opens any door I would say and, and and I think each human being has something to offer even the person who's a housekeeping person can tell us something about cleaning or about you know uh, garbage uh, you know how to segregate it if you are willing to learn <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, the universe is abounding so I was saying that you know uh, no other time than this pandemic where we have yes. learned a few things uh, cleanliness but for sure it has it has been a bigger lesson very big lesson the, the pandemic has helped me you know put things on linkedin and publish because right. we are not available to speak but i'm i'm working on a couple of publications for myself especially what i spoke on unconventional learning uh, ah. yeah there, there are enough uh, instances of learning which i think the wider world should be aware of oh wow so is there a book in making uh, man uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm on that. Uh, it's a little bit of a <laughs> thing, but I've got to do it. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you all the best for that writing. And I really can't wait, uh, especially given the amount of uh, experience and the relatable stories that you have around uh, every aspect that you have. You know, while I was working on looking at your experience, and there's so much variety 
so that's why I kept the name as keeping at it. And that's one question that I that I want to check with you. And I'm making notes here. So what makes Emmanuel David relearn and keep going? So uh, it's quite interesting. You know, I had the opportunity. I learned a lot from the people I've interviewed as part of my role uh, as a human resource. Okay. And, uh, and I've lived and I've worked in different sectors, uh, automobile, uh, oil and gas, right. hospitality, uh, infrastructure, financial services, projects. So all these have given me a perspective. For me to be effective as a human resource person, I, I always felt I should know what the business is all about. So if you ask me something about metallurgy, I would be able to tell you something because when I interview people or I have to frame business issues, I've learned a little bit about metallurgy and welding as such. Right? And if you know about oil and gas, I have something around there. And about financial services, you know, talk about net interest margins and you know, risks and stuff like that, uh, one has a thing. So, so one has to do it as part of my uh, role if I, if I needed to make an impact as a human resource leader. So that was one driving force for me. But other than that, uh, it's just a natural curiosity, you know, which perhaps uh, <laughs> made me, you know, ask questions and find out. And I have also somewhere along thought it is okay to say, I'm sorry, I'm not aware, but could you help me understand? And, oh, yes. and people are willing to tell you, uh, you don't have to admit it in the boardroom, but you can take a power with someone and say, hey, sir, could you just help me understand? And people are more than happy to do that. So, so you know, that is a driving force. Uh, it, it, I, when I reflect, right, Emmanuel, uh, what you said about curiosity and yeah. uh, diversity of curiosity also, uh, I reflect on my first job where I was given a freedom to work with different teams. It was not a part of my job. I was actually part of customer support. But I was, uh, nobody stopped me to go and check how finance team does things. And I used to just sit, make notes or understand, ask questions. And the individual was quite happy uh, to you know, help share this little kid of whatever he's asking and uh, sharing things. Uh, that helped me a little later when, I was, when there was a level up opportunity because I was one of the only uh, individuals who knew little more than the uh, support. And uh, that's how it works. It's, it's, it, you, you keep investing, you do your homework, you just keep that curiosity. And in some way or other, uh, you have no clue how it will help you. Maybe yes. not like uh, in my case, a leveler, but it will keep you aware how that individual is going through, what is he going through, and you can resonate. So beautiful. I think, uh, thanks for that. Uh, it, it gave me an insight of and reflection. So, so relearning, you know, is, is an important aspect. I would say about unlearning and relearning. In my growing up years, uh, my father was working social service organization and he had a gentleman working as his uh, stenographer. So I've seen him and sure. then later, you know, he joined a government uh, company and he wanted the security of a job. Uh -huh. And it just so happened that uh, with incomes and he became, he wasn't dead and his debts were very high. And then, you know, sometimes circumstances force you that the only right. way to get out of the situation was to get out of his job. There was a VRS which was possible. So he said, let me take the VRS and get out of this job. And okay. uh, a friend then asked him, what would you do later? He thought that he could probably help people and earn some small amounts, uh, you know, do some odd jobs. But uh, this person said, why don't you try learning acupuncture? Uh, here is this man, okay. stenographer. <laughs> and in debt. And in debt. Right. And then that friend persuaded him. He said, you will learn it. And uh, so he invested that money, a small money at that time, uh -huh. and did acupuncture, the certification. Then he said, he didn't think too much about it until he got the certificate, which called him Dr. So-and-so. And that kind of gave him a boost. Suddenly, you know, he got a social identity. He said, oh, uh -huh. if there is that, then let me study more. So he, he went back to the books and studied a little more and wanted to practice. 
But because he was motivated enough and his own circumstance was such, the first few cases were fantastic successes for him. Oh, okay. okay. And, and then that kept him going and he learned more. And this was sometime nice. in the year 2006. Okay. And eventually, he was able to augment his income much more than what uh, he was earning. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's built another house. He's debt free. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so I, I spoke to him. He says the greatest joy for him is that people whom he has trained. Now he's become a he's become a a, a coach, a teacher, and an examiner as well. Okay. In the acupuncture area, so he's developed an ecosystem. He knows Prashant about the human anatomy, and I myself, you know, so some of my. Uh, uh, little ailments and illnesses, my family, uh, he has done the acupuncture on us. Wow. Right? So, so for me, learning, relearning is, is actually, it's so important. There is no such thing as dead end. There are people like that who are able to actually make a livelihood because when everything seemed, you know, bleak and gloomy, uh, because of his interest in learning, is he's transformed himself. Wow. That is one story. It, it's, purely looks like a, a story for a movie, right? So, <laughs> hello, <bro. laughs> who turned into acupuncture and being successful at it. And he's achieved much more and in multiple folds uh, than he could have been. <laughs> yeah. Wow, beautiful. All right. So let's get to know you a little more. Uh, I hope you're ready for this. Uh, these are some personal questions. Uh, but yeah, but sure, uh, yeah. yeah, super. Yeah. Okay, so what is the strangest thing you did while attending a meeting or a webinar? Sometimes you think you, 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 uh, you're on mute and you're not. And then, you know, you're, you're saying something. And then yeah. my colleague calls me and says, uh, please mute yourself. You can hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was uh, telling someone about a program or something which was not connected with it or I was not on mute but you think you're on mute and you say something <laughs> <laughs> which you shouldn't have said that that's very embarrassing also <laughs> all right so thanks for sharing that the second one is if you if you weren't in the learning and development industry what would you be what would Emmanuel David be and I've been thinking I've been enjoying sales and marketing and I, okay. I thought I should have been running a PNL, running, uh, doing sales and marketing. The whole idea of influencing people to an idea or to a, to, to a product or a service or an experience uh, really delights me. So okay. if I were to start again, perhaps in the marketing avatar. Okay. Do you have a recommendation yeah. of a podcast, book or a TV series or a movie that you're recently watching, reading or listening? So I would recommend this book, uh, The Platform Revolution, how network okay. markets are transferring the economy, how to make them work for you. There's a book by Jeffrey Parker, Marshall Van Alstyne, and uh, Sangeet Paul Chaudhary. I think a good read, simple and easy to understand, and very uh, contextual for us to apply. Okay, super. And that's a great uh, recommendation. We started this podcast with uh, how you keep at it. And I think we've got a little insight on how by keeping at it, it's, it's as simple as that. But my personal note is be that curious kid and have that question. It, it surely opens uh, a conversation, if not anything else. And I, I, I will steal your words of, you know, you have one life, not necessary. Everything <laughs> is meant for learning. So just enjoy and be at it. Yes, sir. Uh... Prashant, that's a great, great way to close. Thank you. Super. So thank you so much for doing this, Emmanuel. I, I know you, you've given me time out of your very busy schedule. And thank you for be, uh, doing this. Most podcast. welcome. Most welcome, Prashant. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I personally wouldn't want these stories and relearning to end with Emmanuel. And here's wishing TMTC and Learning Latitudes a very good luck as they complete their 100th webinar on 25th of August. I will ensure I write Emmanuel's contact details and social media handles in the description. You can share your relearning by writing to us on the relearning podcast at gmail.com. We are the relearning podcast on Facebook and Instagram and relearn podcast on Twitter. 
Don't forget to share this episode and the relearning podcast with your friends and family. Until next time, this is Prashant Uttekar and please stay curious. Keep at it.